Uh, yeah, you know, he's has, he has a lot of, uh, you know, experience, um, you know, both on the outside corner and at the nickel spot. So, you know, we're a little banged up right there uh, right now. So he gives us some good depth and, and, and a guy who's done it before. Um, and we're excited to have him on, on this football team. How long do you think it would take him to kind of get familiar with the defense and all that? Yeah, you know, I don't know. We've, we've had guys ready to play. All, all sorts of different different times. Um, and so I, that's, you never really can tell. Um, the plan's still being worked out, right? Well, obviously, we don't have our game plan finished yet. Um, we still have multiple days to, to work on that. So, you know, you know, we'll see. We'll see how long it takes. Uh, I know he's a really sharp guy. Um, and so, you know, we'll see. I mean, everybody's a little bit different, though. Hey, Nick, in reference to that third and 11 where Brian wanted to pass and you decided to run the ball, how often does that happen? I guess whether it's over the course of a game or, or season. Sixteen times. Next question. No, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, don't, I mean, is it a, yeah. Does it happen regularly in a game? Is it like a? Is it a normal thing? I guess for for you guys. Yeah, I mean, you got. What I don't think people understand is like we go through this process together, right? This is still like we, you know, as we come in here, like. The offense hasn't changed very much as far as the schemes that we're running from Shane to, to Brian. And so, like, I was hired here to be an offensive coach. And so um, I have a vision of what I want it to look like. I'm in every offensive meeting, um, both game planning meeting and uh, offensive meeting. And so, you know, that we, we think through everything together um, and talk through everything together. And so, you know, obviously, just like with Shane, I'm sitting there and talking to him. Um, it's no different. If, if you want the answer that I think you might be looking for, is there's no different from Shane and myself with Brian and then this one. Um, Y'all just know, you know. I just told you all. I gave you some information that maybe what didn't come up last year. So, but it's the same dynamic. Um, so, 16 times. Uh, Nick, uh, getting back to Bradley's presence, is that anything to do with trying to get James back more on the outside? Yeah, you know, again. He has experience, and we're we're banged up right there right now. So Howie did a great job of going finding a guy that we thought we thought was pretty good last year. You know, when we went in to to play them uh, when he was in New Orleans, um, and so yeah, it gives you more flexibility to do different things. You know, we we're confident in James in, in, at all positions, um, or pardon me, at the outside corner and at the nickel position. Um, but it does just gives you some more flexibility there. Nick, last week uh, Hassan got his first sack of the season. You know, obviously having a big year last year. When you're, when you have a guy who, maybe in, from an individual standpoint, isn't getting the numbers that he might want, or maybe isn't performing in the way he might want. Yeah, to I would only, I would only say that first part. But go ahead. Right. Yeah. Um, well, so do you ever have to handle that? Do you, do you leave that to guys generally? Do you ever step in and say, hey, you know? Sure, I'm always in constant communication with all our guys. You know, that's that's a. Uh, the piece of connecting, you know, I'm finding trying to find things to talk, with ways to connect with everybody, um, and the, and that connection isn't only when things are good, but also when bad, right? And I'm, you know, you can't be a you can't be a tight team if you're only in good times tight, right? It's good times and bad times, and I'm not, and I'm not saying that's a bad time by by for anything because you know when you asked me that question, my my initial spot was well, he's still getting pressures, he's still pressuring the quarterback. Sacks just come in waves, um, and they and they tend to come in waves. You know, he got his first sack, but that doesn't mean he hasn't changed the game of because of the way he's been putting pressure on the on the quarterback. Um, it's just the first time he actually got him down to the ground in this particular case. Um, but those things come in waves. Um, but I, I think I answered your question as far as the the connection part with in good times and bad times. I just don't believe that this is a bad time with the sun, but I'm always finding ways to talk to the guys about different things. How has your interaction with the defensive coordinator changed on a weekly basis now that you have someone that you're just starting to get to know versus Gannon, who you knew previously? Yeah, I don't think it's the get to know. It's, it's, it's the get to know in, in the game, within the game of football, right? And so I spent the same amount of time with – I would say I spent about the same amount of time with Gannon in season last year in, this, in our second year together as I do with Sean right now. Um, but there was obviously a catch up, you know, of things that, you know, that I, you know, had a vision for the defense and different things like that. There was some catch up to be played, you know. Um, Morgan and I had a lot of years together. Um, we had to make that up, you know. I, I, I couldn't, 
we had to get to where we were last year with all our thoughts on as far as my thoughts situationally, all these different things, you know, that we were last year with Gannon in in off season, right? So there was more time spent there in that particular case, um, because the, my again I hired Sean to do a job, and um, and I think he's doing a great job, um, but I also have to be very clear of what the description is of the job and what I require in certain situations, right? And so even though I'm hiring him to do a job and I don't want to micromanage by any means. I still have visions of things the way they're supposed to – that I want them to look like um, as the head football coach because at, all, at the end of the day, everything out there has, has my name on it. Um, and so it was just Jeff Moore catching him up, trying to do everything we could do to catch him up to a point of – so we're not taking a step back, you know, when we, when we started the season. And I felt like we worked really hard at that. And it, and it showed up in some situational things that – um, some of the things that we've discussed in a positive way. Hey, Nick, I know about Sean and, and Brian, um, and, and you mentioned the word micromanage there. How do you tote that line and make sure that what you're doing isn't um, micromanaging and you're allowing those guys to do their jobs? Yeah, again, I have to just be very clear of what my job description is, um, and this is what we say to the players too. Hey, here's what the job, my, our job, how do we get better every day? Well, one, it's high detail in meetings, and – uh, that high detail meeting starts with us as coaches just painting the job description very clear. Here's what I want you to do versus this. Here's what I want you to do versus this. Here's what I want you to do versus this. Is Am I um, doing more on offense than I am on defense? Yes. Um, but, you know, micromanaging and, and then just being very detailed, those are those are two different two different things or, or, or a fine line in between them. I, I don't know. Um, but, again, I want Sean to know how I see it as an offensive point of view right um you know I want him to see it how how I you know what it looks like from an offensive point of view because the thing you know one thing that I know is that when I learn defense more and more I get you know or the the more in my career when I took another step of learning defenses I became a better offensive coach well that's my that's my job job to do with Sean that like I'm trying to give you guys information but it's not like I'm saying, do this right here, right? Like it's not how that goes down. Like that's micromanaging, in my opinion. Ours is just as a constant attempt to get better, um, and letting me, like, you know, let them know what I, what I, what I require um, and what I, what I'm looking for. Um, so, is there times where it is that I want this? Yeah, but again, I'm the head coach. If that's micromanaging, it is. But I, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, my name's on the. On the, uh, on the product out in the field, and that's my job as a head coach. Nick, with uh, Sidney Brown, he, he's obviously a young guy who's been able to handle, I, I know he's hurt right now, or was hurt, but handle the slot, safety, you're comfortable moving him around. Uh, what does it take for a young guy, for you to have the comfort level to give him multiple things? I know there's overlap, but uh, it's a lot. And, yeah. Um, and how unusual is that, I guess? Um, you know, he's very sharp, a uh, really sharp guy. Um, and high football IQ, we knew that with him coming in, and we knew, you know, you don't want to, you don't, you don't want to overload uh, anybody. You know, we don't want to overload uh, a guy playing a certain position. We don't want to overload anybody. Jason, Jalen, right? those are guys that, that have that do a lot. You know, we don't want to overload anybody because then you, you you can you just give them too much to think about. That's not a good thing. So there's a balance in there, but I think it all starts with Sydney, the guy that. You know his football IQ is high, and he's able to handle a lot. and And we need his versatility, and that's another reason why we we have him here. So I think he's done a nice job handling that, and looking forward to getting him back. What happened these past two months, or I guess what did you see that made Sua the clear top option at right guard? Yeah, just his performance of what he's what he's done. Like I said, he's played he played an unbelievable game um, on on Sunday, and so that's that's confidence. You know of games that he's played. He didn't play as much last year, but in 2021 gave us a lot. And even before that, I'm just saying in the time, time I've been here, uh, he gave us some really good we, – we won some big games with him in 21 on that field. We know his, we ha he has great power. Um, you know, he's really, he really can do the things that we require of our guards to do. Um, and so we have a lot of faith in him based off his um, previous games that he's played. But, you know, that faith really gets built year in, year out. It is a what have you done for me lately league. We understand that. So it, it's built through the practice, right? And this is his first opportunity, first extended opportunity to go in a game this season, and I thought he did an outstanding job. But it's just the, 
the weekly, you know, everything's evaluated and it's the weekly um, product that he's put on the field. So I was going to ask you about uh, uh, as far as uh, Jason Kelsey said on the podcast yesterday that the league sent a, a letter to you guys uh, alerting you to the fact that you're lining up off sides on the tush push play. And he also said Dickerson wasn't off sides on that. And Deron Payne had his hand under the ball and the snap. I and mean, what, what's your reaction to those, those three things? Um, you know, again, anything – we'll just keep our, our conversations with the league private, like anything that they said back to us if we turn anything in or anything like that. You know, they, they do a great job of giving us information, and I just want to keep those conversations private with us and, and the NFL. Um, but, you know, we, we have to make sure – like we, we have to make sure that we don't, we don't leave any doubt – on the field that were legal during that play, uh, bec- you know, because like Jason said, there was an emphasis on it this week. Um, and, you know, I'm not here to argue whether I thought the call was right or wrong, uh, you know, uh, uh, on that. Uh, well, you know, you know, I'm always going to think that, that we're, the, we're right in, the, in it. Um, but, again, league does a good job of giving us information. Um, we understand that the referees have a, have a tough job to do. I'm, not, I'm never going to criticize that uh, aspect of it. Um, I know they got a tough job. Are all the calls going to go the way we want them to go? No. Are they always going to be right? No, but neither is what, what I do. So, um, yeah, I'll just keep it at that. Last one, Ella. Nick, Nick we always talk to you about your process and how you – that's a huge philosophy for you, sticking to your process. You've seen Thursday Night Football. You've seen Monday Night Football. Now you're going across the country. How does that impact perhaps your process this week to get the guys ready for such a big trip? Sure, yeah, good question. Everything, every different scenario has a different process, right, that – that we're constantly trying to perfect. So you can't perfect your process unless you know exactly what your process is. So, and, the, and not only that, take that a step further and that you're constantly evaluating that process. We know exactly what it is at the end of us doing it. We evaluate it and say, Hey, did we handle this Monday night game? What, what are suggestions of the players? What are suggestions of the other coaches? What are my thoughts and how do we tweak um, what, what that looks like? So, you know, We've had a couple different uh, West Coast trips that we've had here um, in the past couple years. Um, Las Vegas, uh, Denver. What was last year? Arizona. Um, and so now that coming off of Arizona, we've, we've had conversations. Hey, what did we not like? What did we like? I think the biggest difference, without getting too much into it, is the Saturday schedule of what we're doing. More so when we, you know, here, um, maybe leaving a little bit later, but also – you know, when we get there and the time change of they don't need to hear my voice over and over when we get there. So the meetings are a little bit shorter when we get there. So it's all about that it's because it is it's a, it's a trial and error thing. And I got to go. Yeah. But it's a trial and error thing. Like, you know, I, you feel things like that. Like in, but that's why you have the evaluation of every process that you have. Thanks, everybody.